or trophy case, if you will. Probably not in the closet. <laughs> it might be. He might be hiding it. <laughs> 2012 uh, has just done an amazing job of year in, year out, consistency of excellence for the Texas Longhorns. Louisville seated number one, Texas number two, Wisconsin number three, and the Pitt Panthers at number four. And to say the least, that Texas has by far the toughest draw looking at the regionals. Texas, champions of the Big 12. Washington, champions of the Big uh, Pac-12, excuse me. SEC champs and defending national champs, Kentucky. And then a team that's just done a few things in college volleyball, both lately and throughout time. The Nebraska Cornhuskers finished second in the Big, in the Big 12. So quite a difficult road for Texas to get back to the national semis. Absolute challenge for everyone in that bracket, everyone across the country, but it is tough in this region. 38th tournament appearance for the Texas Longhorns. They have never lost in the opening round. Fourth tournament appearance for Sacred Heart. They go by the Pioneers. They're wearing red, and Sizik will serve it up first. And that ball ripped over the top of the block by 33, Logan Eggleston, back-to-back -back Big 12 player of the year. Good run to the outside already. Keeping that speed when that ball's off the net, we'll keep an eye on the, the speed of the offense to the pins tonight. A little bit of a slow developing combo play, if you will. Reagan Palanchi, six foot two junior, able to put that ball away. I like that, just a little two ball right in the middle of the court, not a traditional quick attack out of the middle. There is 6'1 sophomore Dominique Felix out of Pittsburgh. Her sister, Alana Felix, is from Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania. She didn't want to be from Pittsburgh. No. Your yes, hometown, no. by the way. That's right. They're both right there. Come on, guys. One of only two departing seniors on the floor now, Sydney Peterson, along with Breon Butler. Everybody else for Texas has already committed to coming back next year. What a stacked team it's going to be once again. Looking for a tough float serve, and Peterson has that drift just over the end line. 5-4 senior out of Dyke, Iowa. Was previously the Libero. That is being now manned by Nalani Yossi out of Southern California. You just saw her serve previously. Best three out of five sets. The winner to take on Rice tomorrow night at 9 Eastern. Perfect first contact by Para. And pretty nice job by the Pioneers getting some hands on O'Neill, but number seven, Asia O'Neill. Six foot three redshirt junior out of South Lake, Texas. First team, all Big 12 once again. I mean, wasn't the whole starting team? Yeah, pretty Molly much Phillips everybody. made second team. That's right, everybody other else. Other than that. <laughs> and Jenna Gabriel, congratulations right. for the second year in a row. Uh, Big 12 setter of the year. Well, Here's Eggleston. That was a nice rip into the cross court. Number 14, Jasmine Rogers, 5'10", junior out of Ridgewood, New Jersey, putting the ball to the floor. What I like about this set is it's off the net, and she's expecting it to be off the net. That's at about nine, eight, nine feet, giving her some room to work around the block. I was going to ask you that. Mm -hmm. When you play a team as physical as, as Texas, does the setter on the opposing side need to adjust, keep the ball a little bit farther off the Absolutely net? Absolutely have to. They have to. There is Skylar Field, wearing number five in white. Six foot two junior plays the opposite earlier in her career, now playing on the left side, which is not an easy transition, but she's made it look quite easy in Missouri City, Texas. Did it very, very well. O'Neill has been a good server ever since she put on the burnt orange for Texas. Good set by Sizzle. And a nice rip once again off the edge of the block by Rogers, who gets back-to-back -back kills. Rogers wearing number 14, averages just over two kills per set. That's a great set by Sizik. That's a bump set from all the way across the court, perfectly placed. More on Sizik as oh, nice a serve by Rogers. Sarah Sizik wearing number three in red out of San Juan Capistrano, setter of the year in the Northeastern Conference four times and also player of the year. But other than that, not so much. Right. <laughs> Perfect pass. Delivery to Breon Butler, number 10 and one. 
They've been working on that connection behind. We know how good Graham Butler is in front on the ones and the threes, but this slide connection has just gotten so much better over the course of this the season, look how high she can go over top of the block. Breon Butler hitting 465. That is the best among all attackers in the Big 12. And has even upped that a little bit over the last five matches. Three ball to Butler, just hanging it up and missed it out of bounds. That ball a little bit long, but back to Butler. 32 kills on 54 swings in the last five matches for the All-American middle blocker. That's scoring some That's points. Scoring a lot of points. They've been getting it to her and throwing that little slow one ball to her, like you saw earlier, where she just missed, but she's been scoring a lot on that. This is the sister, Alana Phillips. Philip Felix, excuse me. And through the block and down by Fields. This is where it's gonna be trouble. The Texas attackers are just so physical. They can go up and over top of the block, and they don't have to hit the ball deep into the court. They can go just in front of the defenders. A big early moment for the pioneers of Sacred Heart University facing the jump serve of Melanie Parr. She's capable of running off a handful. There it is. What makes her serve so tough? Well, it's a, it's a hard paced serve. It's got some spin on it, but she hits it so flat and fast. I, it just gets on you quick and you can't control it with your platform. Number one in the Big 12, as we mentioned, uh, the same number and ranking for Breon Butler. Nice pass. That ball set a little bit tight, but if you're six foot five, Molly Phillips, good footwork, got to that ball. That's what you're going to be able to do. And we talked to Coach Machen earlier, and he said if we're tipping on them, that's not going to be a good thing because they're going to be able to transition and score. So I'm sure he's going to talk to his team just about working the block a little bit more and Molly Phillips able to get there and find some space between that block. Far again, and this is that. That is a break for Sacred Heart anytime they get par off the line. But she did score a couple of points yep. and certainly got their attention as Sizik will go back to the line. She started the match. 231 kills on 510 swings. Your setter. She's the setter. And she's the only setter that plays very offensive-minded. That ball missed just out of bounds by number 22, Olivia Fairchild. 6'1 grad student out of Phoenix, Arizona. A transfer from Fordham. A couple of good defensive touches on the side of Sacred Heart, just keeping the ball alive. They just have to keep that ball in play on the in transition. Nice delivery by Sizik. Texas. Eggleston along with Asia O'Neill left a very nice dig by the Libro Yosia. Yosia staying underneath the ball. They've been good at every single phase, but we'll watch Logan Eggleston move this block all the way in. That's what makes this block so good. The ball falls inside, Eggleston makes her move, and they can get in front of the hitter. Biggest lead opening set for Texas in back-to-back -back service errors. We featured Logan Eggleston along with Skyler Fields. How much has Eggleston improved over her tenure here at Texas? And in what areas primarily? It's been tremendous. I mean, she came in as a phenomenal attacker, a very good blocker, but it's really been her passing and her defense that stepped it up just at another level. She's a primary passer, six rotation, outside hitter, so it's really been everything, every part of her game. Hunter Rydell, 6'1", sophomore out of Dana Point, California. This is that ball just out of bounds. She'll head to the sideline as Peterson comes back on, replacing Phillips. You're going to see some missed serves on the side of Sacred Heart. They talked about they had to put pressure on Texas, so expect to see some missed serves along with some tough ones inbounds. Yeah, I don't know what adjective to use other than prohibitive, but Texas is, is indeed a prohibitive favorite in this first round matchup. Yeah. Texas knows it, so does Sacred Heart. They're on the throwdown. Eggleston with another kill. That's that high tip to the middle of the court, almost impossible to defend when she's fully extended. There's no one that can chase this down. A, a high tip you can run down maybe and track, but that contact point makes it very difficult. Overpass Eggleston once again in Texas. Settling in, opening round match of this 41st NCAA Volleyball Championship.
There is Rob Machen, again in his 15th year. Started his career as a volunteer assistant for Jared Elliott when he was the interim head coach at USC. And then Coach Machen stayed at USC for five more years, working under Hall of Fame coach Mick Haley, who is here, by the way. Got the two winningest coaches of all time. In the building. Jared Elliott is now the winningest coach all time. Nick Haley is the gentleman that he surpassed. Both of well, Nick's already in the Hall of Fame. Jared will be. But uh, Rob Machen got them started in, in their successful careers. I mean, it's all information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship. Log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Texas dialing in at a cool 583. Sacred Heart started pretty well. Three kills on their first five swings, but since then, they've gone over. And difficult Texas serving very tough and getting a block in place. That's the combination. Texas third in the Big 12 Conference at 2.6. Locks per set, fairly stout, six foot three, six foot four, athletic, and very well trained. Here's Peterson, the lead is 16 out. Perfect first contact, quickly to the outside, off the edge again. Perfect three ball pass by Yosia. Well, that's what they've been working on, those touches and how important it is for them to control every single ball that, so they can be in system consistently. Three service errors. I'm sure that's too many for Texas fans as they groan a little bit. But in the main, isn't that one of the phases of the game where this Texas team has kind of set itself apart from teams in the past? Without question. And they're good from every single server. Everyone's good. They have different serves, and they can drive it and score runs of points. So it's, it's been an impressive upgrade. Nice block again coming on the floor. Sage Ka'aina Torres, the transfer from Utah. Transferred about mid-season, if you will, when she was able to join the Longhorns. What does she bring differently than Jenna Gabriel? Well, she's just a bigger block at the net. This is something that's been important to them. They need to get some blocking on the right side of the court. So you see it right there. That's what she provides. And she's a great setter. I mean, she's a fantastic setter. She can run the offense, but that's the difference. Uh, it could have been a lift call. Logan Eggleston went to get, talk about all phases of the game. Yep. She receives serve, plays six rotations. We've seen her blocking. She had this kind of jump hybrid yep. thing for a long time. She's gone away from that. I think she, this is the best serving run of her career. I agree. I like this jump float because she hits it consistently, high contact point, and it's a tough jump float that just gets on you really, really fast and deep. Good first contact out of the back row. That's a nice combination between number nine, the setter, Torres, and number 33, Eggleston. Well, nice. Eggleston makes that play, kind of half spins around in the back court. You're not sure she's still going to get set, but she sets her anyway out of the back row. Texas leads it 20 to 9. Timeout taken by Sacred Heart. To the Big 12 and 15 and 1. Only blemish on the year was at Baylor. Baylor in this tournament is the number five overall seed. Texas finished at 24 and 1. Good pass. That's a good play by Sacred Heart, but a better block by O'Neill with some help from Torres. Boy, I like that speed to the outside. That was a good delivery. That's just an unforced error. I think that Skyler Fields knows that you just missed one. You can't make them all. You can't make them all, and it's a nice run. They want to keep that offense. We talked about that earlier, the speed of the offense, getting it quick out to quick and high. That's the key to the pins for Texas. Oh, good serve. Touch by O'Neal. Getting after that, and a pretty good arm by Olivia Fairchild, who had 20 kills against LIU. That's Long Island University, if you were expecting a translation. <laughs> she's getting fired up for her team. They talked, Coach Mason said she's going to swing away from the service line at the net. She's going to just go after it tonight. That's what he told her, gave her the green light. Yeah, if you're Sacred Heart, why do you leave anything in the locker room? You serve every ball as tough as you can. You go after everything as hard as you possibly can make it happen. Riley Heinrich 
backup defensive specialist and Libro out of Georgetown, Texas, on to serve. Sizik is a nice looking setter. That is a really good delivery, but that ball missed just out of bounds. Well, and a lot of times setters have a tough time running that slide off of the pass from zone one, and you intentionally serve it there, but she's very comfortable running anything from anywhere. Coach Machen telling us that when he recruited Sarah Sizik out of San Juan Capistrano, California, she was a hitter and always had been, but she wanted to be a setter, so he committed to that. You come, we'll train you to be a setter. Nice kill off the left side. Desmond Rogers has been solid. Couple kills early. And then this one has kind of gotten away, 22 to 12. She's been solid. She's hitting that ball again. Perfectly placed, just a little bit off the net. That's giving her just enough room to see through the block. Three kills on five swings for Sacred Heart to start the set. They only have one kill since then on 12 swings. Tough serve. Boy, that is a perfect set. Just dropping a dime. Nalani Yosia, the Libero. That's something that Texas has been really working out. They're out of system when they're off the net, but way off the net. Can they continue to convert on those plays? And Yosia allows them to do that. Torres staying on the floor. Wow, look. Ooh, ooh. Torres thought that she had an ace. <laughs> I thought she may have had it. I did too. And here comes Jenna Gabriel, and we can see why <laughs> Torres stayed in to serve. That was a rocket and just a few centimeters long. Coach Elliott said that he's been working on a hybrid with her. She's mixed up just how she's serving, but when she's, <laughs> she can get it going, it's really effective. Good dig by Rogers. Coming out of the backcourt and misses it out of bounds after a pretty nice dig. So now it'll be 10 set points for Texas. Mentioned winning another Big 12 championship. That's the 12th Big 12 title overall, and they've won or shared 13 out of the last 15. And there were seven Big 12 teams that made it into the field. This was not a cakewalk. This is not a cakewalk and an impressive dominance. Here's Parra. Already with a service ace and some service pressure. Good pass. That's the way to hang in. And they net ball nicely off the edge of the block by Dominique Felix. Felix looking for the edge of the block. That's what they want to do. They want to blast away, blast at the hands of that big Texas block. Set point number two. Good block touch. Sizik stepped in front. Ball set a little bit tight, but no problem for a guy. Goes, oh, that was called out of bounds. Looks like there was no touch on the play. No challenge being called. No challenge on the touch. All the crowd around us, they're all going. They're, they're looking at us. They want, they want to know. They, they're pretty convinced. Well, 24-15. Perfect pass. Oh, good block touch out of the middle. Nicely done. Fairchild off the edge. There she is again. But it started with that block touch. A good read, knowing where the ball's going to Butler. Staying and waiting and slowing the ball down. Still a 24-16 lead. Set point number four now for Texas. 3-0 run for Sacred Heart. Sizik doing a nice job at the line. Perfect pass. And that ball missed out of bounds. A couple of unforced errors on the side of Texas, and that's, that's what they want to make sure that they're taking care of the ball, like just keeping it in play, putting it in front of the, the defenders, not giving up runs of points. Four hitting errors on 22 swings. Oh, tough serve. Five-nothing run. This is Friday at 6 p.m. Central on LHN and the ESPN app. Back with Slim Rockwell. I'm Paul Sunderland. Rice, a very, very convincing performance earlier tonight over a solid team from the University of San Diego. So they await the winner.
They've beaten Texas two out of the last three times, have the Rice Owls. They have indeed. Didn't beat them earlier this year. That was a beatdown yeah. in Houston on the part of Texas. Set point again. Wow, look at this. Well done by Sacred Heart. Well, and this is, it's not just serving, you know, a tough serve. That seam has been difficult for, oh. for Texas throughout the year. I've noticed that between kind of Para and Yosia, they've had some trouble there in that seam combined with a tough serve. And all the opponents tonight and moving forward will know that as well. Phillips, nice snap over the top of the block. Well, Texas had a very big lead at 20 to 9, and uh, they stumbled a little bit getting this one into the barn, if you will, to close it out, but uh, eventually put down Sacred Heart 25 to 19 to take the, two, the one set to none lead. It to, of course, Sacred Heart for getting a couple of things done, but they can side out. They can get behind the ball, put it up in the air, and, and find a way to side out, and they need to do it. So Melanie Parra, who had an ace in the opening set, will start things off for the second-ranked and second-seeded Texas Longhorns. And this is that just out of bounds. That's for a break for Sacred Heart. Would Sacred Heart get a lot of confidence from the way they finished that opening set? Absolutely, especially when you have Sizzik back there serving tough. She's now at the service line again and just giving her own team confidence. They feel pretty good about that going into this next set. Setter of the year four times in the conference. And remember, she came in as a hitter transitioning. That ball missed out of bounds by Butler out of the middle. Way too many hitting errors, at least over the last, let's say, 10 or 12 yes. serve receptions for the Longhorns. Several unforced hitting, hitting errors, and that's uh, not like Texas to just hit balls out of bounds. It's a nice setting transition, but the block is better. Once again, Breon Butler and Eggleston. Getting that block together. They've been good on the left side of the court here against Fairchild. She's wanted to take some big rips at the block, but they're not letting her get around it at all. Fifth block for the Longhorns. None so far for Sacred Heart. What a nice set by Sizik, number 20, looking high hands. With that ball out of bounds. Dominic Felix missed it. Just caught a piece of the antenna going by. She was looking for, for those hands, wants a blast off the block as well. Good pass. Really good first contact. Sizik, first look at her, how crafty she is and aggressive offensively. A decent free ball pass, but certainly not perfect. That ball was in. Crowd near us is very active. They're, they're very active. Calls, they're in call. <laughs> very good. Very good. They're always on it. But this is this pickup. Look at by that. Yosia. Look at Yosia. Yeah, just crawling, making it happen. That's what you have to do. Keep going hard. That is a nice pass by Felix, but an unforced error out of Palanchi. In the middle, number 16 in red. Once you're trying to see some room around that block, that's tough when you've got two of those big blockers in front of you trying to cut around it. After their next side out, they being Sacred Heart of the tournament resume. Fourth appearance all time, 38 for the Longhorns. Nice play by Asia O'Neill. Jared Elliott was telling yesterday how much she has improved on her percentage and execution of the gap. Well, that's a big thing to have different a variety of sets for your middle so good on the slide everybody knows that about asia o'neill but she's been so good in front of the setter in between the two blockers hit 381 this year third best in the big 12 conference once again first team all big 12. that's a good block well i'll get it to you now about sacred heart they were in the tournament in 2010 played stanford 2011 played nebraska 2019 played baylor this year playing Texas. That's tough. And, and, and somebody in their PR department said, well, wasn't Wisconsin available as well? <laughs> Could, couldn't we get them too? 
but a, a tremendous accomplishment for them to get into the tournament play on a stage like this mm -hmm. against a team like Texas. It's a big deal. It's a big deal for teams to get into the tournament. There's so many teams that want to get in, earn their way into the NCAA tournament. Sacred Heart certainly did that, and they um, deserve to be here and happy to see them here. Seven service errors for Texas. That ball missed out of bounds. What do you know? Volleyball is about serve and receive. Yeah, How really about that? Funny. How about that? <laughs> you think? Well, it, so, because, it, you, know. you know, every team flows when they're in system. Right. But with the weapons Texas has against anybody in the tournament, are they, not, I don't want to say unstoppable, but they are nearly unstoppable if they're consistently in system with the weapons they have. Yes, if they're consistently in system, but, it, but they're even that good out of system. They've been very, very good. That's what I've been impressed with is the ability to score when the ball's off the net. They've been really good at it. And I think at one point they were even slightly better. I'm not sure, but I believe that was the case when they were off the net. So Texas with so many physical attackers, they are very good. Well, and Jenna Gabriel, ever since she took over the starting spot, that's a good swing. That's a net violation called against Texas. <laughs> Jenna Gabriel yeah. saying the ball was out of bounds. <laughs> no, no, not, not quite yet, no. not quite yet. <laughs> 8-4 is the lead. Texas uh, won the opening set 25-19 after leading very comfortably. Got a little sloppy towards the latter stages. This is average passing by Texas, but first-class attacking. Right. I would agree with you. That ball again off the net. You talked about the improvement and, and Jenna Gabriel just running this offense so good. We even stepped it up this year. Her connection with her hitters, the tempo of the ball has been very, very good this season. Well, remember, she was inserted into the lineup, took over for the then star. Ashley Shook, remember? Ashley mm -hmm. Shook right. was honorable mention All-American. Mm -hmm. Jenna Gabriel was handed the keys to the car, so to speak, and she's gone on to have an exceptional career service winner by Eggleston. It is such an interesting story. Jared Elliott was telling us yesterday at practice, Jenna Gabriel was offered scholarships at the University of Portland and Utah State right. and Texas. <laughs> right. And, and, hey. and like nothing in between, you know, I right. mean, I think, I think I'll go to Austin. How, yeah, how would that sound? Let's do that. <laughs> Tough serve. Block touches and transition starting to hone in now for Texas. Well, Sizzik delivers a nice ball. And Jasmine Rogers is having a really nice match against this imposing block number 14 in red. Well, just been smart with the ball. She's hit blasting through it, hitting off of it, and tipping over top of it, seeing the defense really well. Five of nine, hitting 444. The rest of the team is three of 20. Sizek going to get a swing at it, looking deep cross court, and missed it out of bounds. As soon as she played that ball, she backed up off the net to get a big approach. So that's part of their, their system. They want to set her on that second ball as well. And opponents always try to get the first contact to the setter. But right. with, with them, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Have somebody else set Sizzik. 11-5. Good swing through the block again. Rogers registers another kill. Playing with a lot of confidence. It looks like it's, it's a little bit difficult to time her swing, especially when she's off the net. They're coming down. She's got a little bit of a roundhouse waiting on it. So I like it. That's perfect execution. And getting back to Jasmine Rogers and her arm swing. A little bit of Gabby Guimaraes from Brazil. Oh, yeah. That kind of long arm swing. You got to adjust. You got to wait. I think she would like the comparison to one of the best outside. I mean, that's kind of nice. Yeah. Oh, I, I want one of those. You're going to give me one of those next. <laughs> Thinking on it. Good pass. That ball was ripped by Mackenzie Eford, but dug by Texas. And then right back at you by Fields in transition. And Smallcomb went in there. She crashed in, wanted to dig this ball. She saw that Fields was going to go over the top of the block. She almost took it to the face, but. Texas is hitting 394. Eggleston with seven. Fields with five. Phillips with three. Middle's kind of quiet. 
Passing has not been as good as it needs to be. Well, that's the key. If they're off the net, they have to get it to pins, and at least they have the ones that can score. And that's that's the difference as you go further into the tournament. Who's got the terminal left side attackers when the ball's not perfect? Rice waiting in the wings and watching. They know all about Texas. They played Texas earlier this year in Houston and lost 25-14, 25-14. Yep, 25-14. Not sure that that ball cleared by Eford, the block there. But weren't we all so impressed earlier with Rice, as we are with Texas leading 15-6 at the media timeout. University out of Connecticut, one set to none and 15-6. We'll get you some of the final results. There's been one, Kansas beating Oregon three sets to none. I mean, that was going to be one of the very close opening round matches. It was not. Kansas took care of the, the Ducks, just like the Rice Owls took care of San Diego. That's a huge win. Miami has won, as has Florida. So those are two very good teams that will play in the next round. Washington State over Northern Colorado. Rice, as we've talked about. Purdue did advance. They were the number six seed. They'll take on Dayton, a winner over Marquette earlier today. Big win for Dayton. That ball off the edge of the block and down, put to the floor by Dominique Felix. Trying to get some speed out there to the outside, put some stress on that block, and then swing as quickly as they can to see if they can get it to rattle, and that's what happened that time. Sacred Heart is handling the ball pretty darn well in serve-receive. They're not giving away a lot of points in that case. Well, that's a good, very good point, especially against this, this, this serving team that has been serving at such a high level. Texas with good service across the board. They've missed quite a few tonight, but maybe they've pulled back a little bit. But Sacred Heart handling the ball, passing really well. Par can be a big story for Texas, not only tonight and presumably tomorrow, but throughout the course of this tournament. She's lost her rhythm. She took a lot of heat off of that one and missed it anyway. She did, and I've, I've seen her go on runs like that where she you can just see it. You can see it in her body language. You can see it in her face when she's feeling it, and she'll just rip it um, right now. Obviously, with a couple of misses, she's going to get a little more tentative. That's uh, eight service errors against four aces. Look at this. Sacred Heart has the same number of aces. Four aces and close to another one. Good set by Phillips, but Eggleston missed that badly, whiffed it out of bounds, 17-10. And just didn't get good hand contact on that ball. Make that 17-9, excuse me, getting ahead of the game. Sizzik, good rotation. Remember, she ran off a handful of points before Texas could close out the opening set. Tough serve. Wow. You know, I, I think the officials just sort of call that on automatic pilot. I don't. I thought the whole ball. I thought the whole ball was on Texas's side. That's a tough one. We're going to see it right here. Watch the ball as it goes. Yeah, that ball's that's, on the side of Texas. It, it, that's a bad call. I would call. agree with you. Yeah, that's a bad call. Jenna Gabriel has every right to get to that ball. If any part of the ball Correct. is in the plane, then it's a violation. Right. Uh, Phillips on the tap down. Emma Smalkum, the gray jerseyed libero for the pioneers of Sacred Heart, could not keep that ball on their side of the net. 18-10. Banging in there, getting in there like she's fearless. She's getting underneath the ball, crashing when she sees where they're going to attack it. She needs to control it. Good first touch by Yusia and then the throw down. That's pretty close. It is close. To, to being, a, to being a, an advantage throw as opposed to a tip. Timeout is clean. Everything's big in Texas, but they, they need a bigger trophy room here. <laughs> the two, Breon Butler and Sidney Peterson could come back, but they have announced that they're going to be Moving on, and everybody else for Texas is going to take their extra COVID year, 12th Big 12 championship, and 13 out of the last 15. One of the remarkable, consistent runs for Jared Elliott's program. 
Uh, just look at Texas athletics and the number of conference championships and national championships they have won. Off the edge of the block and down. Nice side out score for Sacred Heart. Coming on to serve is Hunter Rydell, 6'1 sophomore out of Dana Point, California. Phillips, very efficient, 382 on the year, 13 kills at Minnesota. She she can be a dynamic contributor to this team, as if they needed another one. Well, <laughs> and they do, and when they need her, that's why she's been good, hitting at a high percentage tonight, getting her a lot of balls there on the right side. Saw them working on that a good bit in practice, too, running to get that connection dialed in. Last weekend, a Big 12 play, she was 17 of 29 with just three errors against a good Texas Tech team that's in the field. Good contact, quality contact by Yosia, setting sub on the floor once again. Kaina Torres, wearing number nine in white for Texas. Fairchild looking to go down the line and missed it out of bounds. It's 21 11. I just love how she's playing right now, just keeps going after it. Talking to her setter about the sets, looking for the block, looking for the edges, but just, just blasting away right now. Good scoring rotation for Texas. Peterson back at the line. Her 11th serve, they've scored on seven occasions. Well, why not with a big lead? Off the edge of the block. Boy, having a really nice match. Jasmine Rogers is seven for 12. Make that six for 12, hitting 417. A beautiful set from her. Her setter scissors all the way across the court. A nice tool off the edge. I was right. She has seven kills. The rest of her teammates have five. <laughs> Skyler Fields with a kill, wearing number five in white. And Texas is three points away. Fields getting some time in the back row. There's another opportunity for her to hit out of the back row and play a little bit now as she rotates into the front row. That ball drifts just out of bounds off the hand of Eggleston, and Fairchild will go back wearing number 22 in red. Sacred Heart again, 11 and 3 in conference. They were the automatic qualifier out of having won their tournament. 19 and 9 on the year. A little better passing rhythm right now for Texas. Nice dig by Felix in the backcourt. that ball cleared but Texas will take the call until Jasmine Rogers takes advantage of the mishandle on the block you have to give credit to the block right now moving Eford back and forth across the net getting some good block touches and that final one there that's the one we were looking at and questioning finished off I think there was a touch yeah. I think Sacred Heart got a hand on it that was a good no call the ball missed out of bounds and now it is 23 to 14. Heinrich, who we saw in the opening set, wearing number 19, will come back on now for O'Neill. Sophomore backup libero and defensive specialist. Good pass. Rogers again, wow. Absolutely. Rogers is playing like an All American. She's blasting off the hands and saw that block. One blocker in front of her. Tools right off the edge one more time. When was the last time? Look at the smile on her face. An outside hitter hit 533 against Texas. <laughs> it's hard to do. And serves up an ace. That's the thing. Just going back there, fearless. Why not go after it? That's where you're going to come up with some of these aces. Breon Butler on the slide. Good response by Eggleston. Perfect first contact as Phillips comes back on. Set points now for the Longhorns. Oh, 
that was quick. <laughs> Serving and serve receive has not been at the highest level for Texas so far on the night. No, it hasn't been. And that's something they, they have to be good at because they can compete with a lot of teams in different areas at the top level, but they have to be good serving and passing. That's the tenth service error, but still plenty of comfortable separation, and that is a service error dialed up by Sacred Heart. So second set point, and Texas will take the two sets to none lead over Sacred Heart. They won the first 25-19 and the second 25-17. The serving was really, really strong for Texas with their aces, and they missed some. We talked about that a little bit earlier, how they missed some serves, but they're driving it. They've been really upping their serving game, and that has been big for Texas, and they're gonna be huge for them down the stretch. And here is our game summary comparison brought to you by thezebra.com. Look at the summary, I mean, it really, there's, there's not much to know. When you look at the hitting percentage, Texas hitting 362, and Sacred Heart zero right now, and the side out percentage as well, but the blocks have been good, but the aces, you know, that's where Sacred Heart has stayed in it a little bit. They're going after it at the service line and, and came up with quite a few aces. Right, and as well as Texas served early, starting off with Melanie Parra, they've got 10 service errors. Rice waiting in the wings. How impressive were the Owls once again. And speaking of again, they were in Omaha last year. Positive test. They were ready to play. They got yep. knocked out of the tournament. So unfinished business. They have advanced. That match will be tomorrow night. Top of the bracket, Washington. And then further on, extending in the bracket, you have Kentucky, Illinois, Nebraska. If, if it goes according to plan, man, this place is going to be crazy next week. <laughs> it's going to be rocking. Starts things off in set number three. Good start with a nice pass, getting the ball to Butler. They've been working her and she and Phillips tonight, really trying to work the middle and the right side a lot when they're passing well. And on the overpass, Molly Phillips is right there. Oh, he alerts at the net, takes care of that ball. You know, just looking at the bracket and yep. some potential matchups, we talked about Florida and Miami. They're going to play tomorrow. Yep. A lot of people thought that Miami should have been seated and playing at home. And then there's a potential matchup in the second round, Minnesota and Stanford. Oh, yeah, we haven't even talked about that jumble over there. I mean, Washington State's over there, too. And you look at between Baylor, Washington State, Stanford, and... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy over there with Minnesota. And Wisconsin at the bottom of that bracket right. as well. But th there's there's no doubt, and everybody agrees. I mean, I, I saw an excerpt. Get to it in just a moment. Good serve. Working on Eggleston. That is a setting mistake. That's way too tight. I was uh, looking around online, and, and John Cook almost said the exact same thing. John Cook, the outstanding coach for the University of Nebraska, mm -hmm. won a couple of national championships, if not more. Memory serves. Um, he said exactly the same thing as Jared Elliott. Yeah. I mean, why are those all four of those teams in the same bracket? It's tough. You see that. Oh. That'll stop me from talking. Eggleston getting on top of that one. Over the top of the block, down in the middle of the court. child off the edge of the block and down and speaking of Nebraska they've won five times total and John Cook won his first in his very first year yeah. there in 2000 and then won also in 2015 and 2017 Stanford has won nine Penn State how about those Nittany Lions they have won seven UCLA four Texas has won it twice and both national championship coaches are in the building yeah <laughs> Mick Haley made history because his 1988 Texas Longhorns were the first non-West Coast team to win the national championship. They did that, beat UCLA in the semis and Hawaii in the finals. Eggleston again. 
And that's a good delivery by Gabriel once again, twice the Big 12 setter of the year. They're, they're heating up with this connection right now, getting a lot more comfortable, that temp tempo and that timing. Nagelston, it's almost like the block's not even there. You know, Texas, it's just, it's fodder and it's important conversation because it's important how the bracket is set up. I'll finish the thought in a moment. Tough serve, nice handle by Rogers. And Fields goes over the top. But last, last year, Texas went through Penn State, Nebraska, Wisconsin, yeah. before losing to Kentucky. And that's just, that's a bear. I have to, to be in that position, have the seed that you do, and then have to go through those teams. But he said it himself. You've got you to beat these teams anyway. I mean, it's tough to do it night after night, and it's hard to see in that side of the bracket. Only one of those teams can come out. But that's where we're at. Rodgers is able to tuck that through. But you look at the Louisville side of the bracket. Louisville, only undefeated team in the country at 28-0. Their matchup in a regional final would be, hypothetically, Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. You've got Ohio State Ohio there. State. Yes, it could, mm -hmm. it could be, but in terms of the seed, Louisville's number one, right. Georgia Tech is number eight. They've already beaten Georgia Tech twice. All right, absolutely, I, I know, and that's, you know, it's a different looking bracket, it really, really is. I mean, when you're, when you're talking about where everybody falls, and that's what we talked about earlier, even in the, the show, I, I said it just depends on where people are gonna land. It's gonna be a battle no matter what, but some of those matchups are a lot tougher than others. Well, and down at the bottom, you have Wisconsin, who were the champions of the Big Ten. And looking, they've got Minnesota, Stanford, yep. and then Baylor at number five to get them in to the semifinal. Here we are on night one. We're already getting way. Well, I mean, that's what we do. That's, that's <laughs> it's what tournament do. time. Let's go. There are going to be a lot of upsets along the way. Will they be among the highest seeds? I don't know, but I think that there's going to be a lot of fives and sixes that lose to unseeded teams and 13s and 14s. There were just so many good teams this year, and, and there were not enough seeds to go around. That's just real. Sizik unable to get that done. I know phone booths aren't around much anymore, no. but that was in a phone booth. That was in a phone booth. This ball's tight. Here's the pickup. Asia O'Neill, very good in the left back. I mean, she's a good defender. She's a good server and very good defensively. And what a tough young woman. What she's had to overcome, two open heart surgeries. One is a youngster, and then the other after the 2019 season to come all the way back and play. Asia O'Neill, just a, a tremendous, tremendous performer for Texas. Well, it's just so scary when you know someone has that type of heart condition, they have heart surgery. I mean, it's really scary, and now she's back playing at full strength. Jermaine O'Neal, proud mother and father, 19 seasons in the NBA. Tight pass, and that ball slam dinked straight to the floor. 9-6 is the lead for Texas. And this is more what we're used to seeing from Texas. Each one of their servers going on a run or two of points from the service line. They all have the ability to do it. Texas hitting 436 so far in the match. They're the third rated, or at least in terms of just sheer raw numbers. They hit 339 on the year. That was first in the Big 12, third nationally. Ahead of them were only Western Kentucky and BYU. Are you talking about maybe some some blood on the Don't floor? know, don't know. That would be my guess as the trainer. Yeah, Dan yeah, yeah. Taylor steps out there. Uh, on the floor, okay. Mm -hmm. There it is. You know, that reminds me of the famous Logan Eggleston story. Oh. Did you see that? She, yes, she it chin. was down over in this corner. She races back to get a ball yeah. and absolutely clocks her chin into the floor. It's bleeding yeah. profusely. <laughs> She's rushing. I mean, she was just unfazed. I think she played the next day. Oh, she did. She did. Yeah, special kid. It's special a, kid. It's been a long time since you see, you know, you used to see split chins all the time, certainly yeah. in the men's game, diving. Jared Elliott telling us that she's had some reasonable success on the NIL front. Yeah. Good yeah, for her. Nice. Good for her. That's, that's a good thing. 
Oh, it's just getting started. I know it is. It's just <laughs> getting started. Here's O'Neill again. The lead is three. Rogers has been Jasmine Rogers. I'm gonna. She's been the best player. On, she's been the best hitter on the floor. She's been the best hitter on the floor. But what her even her passing? She's been handling tough passes as well tonight. And you talked about kind of that loopy arm swing, which has been very difficult to time in the block. Skylar Fields, speaking of best hitter on the floor, now 8 of 12, one error. You know, you talk about the numbers, and you have to take into account, no offense against Western Kentucky, coming out of Conference USA, the same conference mm -hmm. as Rice. But, you know, what would they hit in the Big 12? What would they hit right. in the Big 10? Right. So uh, is Texas the best offensive team, the best collection of arms in the country? Yes. I can say that definitively. I mean, I've seen so many teams, and there's a lot of really good teams, you know, that can win the championship. But if you're talking player for player, position for position, the outsides, the middles, and the right side, yes. So does that make them your favorite to win the national championship? They, they currently are. Okay. Yeah, okay. they currently are. Even with that tough draw, okay. Even with the draw, I mean, yeah. But we'll see. You know, we've seen this whole season's been crazy and loopy. But if you ask me today, I, yes, I, well, I think so. Regional semifinals projecting play Washington, the champions of the Pac-12. Right. I mean, like Texas, they virtually have everybody back yes. from their run to the semifinals last year when they beat Pittsburgh in five. Yep. Have nine players back. They are very, very good. Very so good. is Kentucky. They could win that match. Yes, Kentucky could win. I mean, really, they, they could. But. Felix off the edge of the block and down in Nebraska. You've done a lot of Big Ten mm -hmm. matches this year. And maybe more than any year I can remember, Nebraska comes into the tournament with some question marks, personnel-wise. Yeah, they have some question marks. One of their outside positions that uh, that has been rotating around. And, that, and that's the key. We, we, we know what you need to win championships. You need to you need your left sides to be really good. And if, if one's questionable, you've got to have a lot more going on. And that's what's been tough. Former Longhorn, Lexi Sun. Mm -hmm. Then the freshman group of yep. Krause, Baton Horst. Yep. I know I'm Lonstein. Lonstein. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. you're asking a lot of freshmen to perform at a super high level, absolutely. but they need to. They, they absolutely need they to. They need to. Now, you can never count Nebraska out. And boy, do they have some defenders. And they've got Lauren Stiverance. And Kayla Caffey. Kayla Caffey. Yeah, Kayla Caffey has been a really nice addition. A lot more offense. Nice delivery by Sissick. And kill down the line by number 22, Olivia Fairchild. Fairchild has not stopped swinging since the first point of the match. Perfect pass by Parr, and again, success. It's called a gap, but what are you trying to accomplish by running that particular play? And really, it's called a gap because the hitter actually finds the space between the, the blockers. So if they can jump and you can find them in between, they call it the gap between the right side blocker and the middle blocker. That's the idea. You can call it a 31, that's more to a set spot, but that's the gap between the blockers. Three ball coming, tough one off the tape. Well handled by O'Neill. Good dig by Felix. Parr has got nice ball control. It really does. Yeah, her digging location is quite good. Melanie Parra, 5'11 sophomore out of Mexico. Serving specialist for the most part, but when she's in the backcourt, you've got to do that job as well. We've got to talk about your alma mater. Okay, let's Maybe, go. maybe getting Pittsburgh in the second round. Yeah. What about Penn State's group this year? Well, you know, that's when another group that looking for some consistency on the outside has been a key. Pritchard was out for a little bit, so they had to move some players around and different faces on the court. So, you know, they, they've been, a lot of teams have been up and down. They can play really, really at a high level. So if they're consistent, I mean, that's going to be a battle against a team like Pitt, especially without Kayla Lund, I don't know if she's right. back, if she will be back. Um, that changes things, so that could be a really tough match. And service error, that gets us to the media timeout here in Austin, Texas.
Number two seeded Longhorns. Welcome back as LHN proudly presents the first and second round of the 41st NCAA Volleyball Championships. Asia O'Neill, a little uh, bloody nose there. We were cleaning up some blood momentarily. Now we uh, understand the source. Yeah, we know where that came the from. The culprit, yes. 15-11 is the advantage. Two sets to none. Texas over Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart, the champions of the Northeast Conference. Another good swing. Wow. Jasmine Rogers, 12 kills on 21 swings, hitting over 550. My goodness. I mean, she really has the blocks number and the defense. Here's that free ball coming over the net, and watch how she splits this block. She gets super deep, takes her approach from off the net, finds the space. Workable pass, throw down into the middle of the court. The Pioneers of Sacred Heart will track it down, trailing now by only three. Kept some consistent pressure on Texas. That's a nice dig. Smalcom the Libero in the left back. And missed out of bounds. 15-13. Sacred Heart continues the battle. They've, they've done this every set, staying in it, not backing down, really going away. Oh, that's a bad set. Smart shot up into the block to try to reset. Good first contact, and Sizik into area one, left-handed. That's why she's a very effective offensive-minded setter. We've been waiting for it, but I think her, her bread and butter is that set over, so I think they're trying to avoid some of those tips. When she can rip at it, that's what she likes to do. from the left side helps as well. 15-14, by the way. Good serve. And Fields. Skyler Fields now 11 kills on 19 swings. Very efficient, very calm. What a smart placement. They got to keep the ball away from, from Smallcomb. She's been doing a nice job in the left back, so keeping it towards the middle back or, or hitting the ball down the line, it's going to be better for Texas right now to end plays. Rice has already advanced in this uh, subsection of the bracket, if you will. And Texas as a top seed. If they are to win on the weekend, they would, of course, stay at home and host the regional, which is a great format going to campus sites, which they did several years ago. Well, it's, it's important, and that's why I'm so critical. Everybody wants to be at home. You want to host regionals. You know how tough it is to play in someone else's venue and didn't have an opportunity to do that last year as everything was in Omaha. Felix thought about ripping that. That's a bad pass. And that's going to be a net violation called against Jenna Gabriel trying to dive in and get a hand on that. And also, you know, the crowds are unbelievable. Yes. It's going to be amazing here. It's going to be amazing at Wisconsin. Absolutely. Pittsburgh, it, it, mm -hmm. if, if Pittsburgh gets through. Right. Louisville. Hope, yeah, I hope Kayla Lund is, uh, is able to yeah. play. You don't, want, you don't want anybody who's had such a tremendous season or seasons right. or career not play in the biggest moment at the end. is only 18-15. Your impressions of Rice earlier tonight taking out a very good team from San Diego. I, I, oh, I know they're, they're well coached, but you can see it. You can see how they work well defensively. Really, they're serving their block of defense so connected, and they were siding out at a really high percentage. They may have ended up right around 70% side out, and that's huge as well. That was super impressive how they played. Rogers with a superb dig, playing it at both ends of the floor. And just too much from Phillips, number 15 in white. Now the lead is 19-16. And also an incredible setting performance from start to finish. And no surprise by Carly Graham, the six-foot senior out of Spring, Texas, running a 5-1 for the Rice Owls. Twice the uh, conference setter of the year, and she looked every bit of it. 
She looked every bit of the setter of the oh. year in the Pac-12 or the Big Ten so or any place else. Just so good, so good. Good shot down the line by Felix. Very smart play. That ball's falling inside. The block moves with, with her, and she recognizes no one's there down the line. Sydney Hilly might have an argument at Wisconsin for setter of the year I in mean, the Big Ten. Yeah, I would maybe, say so. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah she's maybe. all right. <laughs> but you know what's been great for the level of play all over the country is all of these fifth-year se seniors, mm -hmm. senior pluses, grad students, whatever you want to call it. I mean, absolutely. these are, ex oh, gosh. These are experienced players. That was a sick angle. Do your job. Now go over there. That's it. This yeah, ball this is... moves it away from the block. Gets on it quick. See, when Texas passes, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? The only way to slow them down is to make them very predictable right. in first ball contact. Nice block by O'Neal. This one now just four points away. A wonderful cause. Please donate if you possibly can. They virtually can't think of a family that hasn't at some point, extended family yep. or immediate family, been touched. Yes, absolutely. Oh, nice stab by Rogers. Still alive. Good hustle by Sacred Heart. Oh. No answer for that. Did you see Smallcom, watch Smallcom at the end of this play. Right. The Libero for Sacred Heart. Here's that chase down and a hustle by Sacred Heart. Staying in it. But the thump by Eggleston. <laughs> what else are you going to do? Smallcom knew she had no chance. <laughs> Three points away. And that ball tucked inside by Fairchild. A good set by Sizik all the way across the court, creating a little bit of that movement in the block by O'Neal. Jasmine Rogers, 12 kills on 21. Fairchild now with six kills on 17. Texas hitting 447. It will be they and the Rice Owls tomorrow at 9 Eastern. That ball missed out of bounds. O'Neal looking for a touch, but no. Sacred Heart has a very nice, well-organized cheering section just across they from do. us. Good job by them. Yes. Good job by their team. They have made some plays. They've hung in against the second-ranked Texas Longhorns, 25-19, 25-17, and now 22-19. We're going to have a challenge there. Yep. Yep. And once again, as a quick reminder, many of you, all of you who've been watching college volleyball throughout the season, got very uh, familiar with the quote-unquote experimental system. That's not in play anymore. It's the old system, so you get three challenges for the entire match unless we play five sets. And it looks like that was a touch on Fairchild. Her body language says it was clearly a touch. You can see. Has to be definitive. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, you can see I the, yeah, 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 yeah. there's a touch. The same, the same areas of the game can be challenged right. under the experimental system, which I think will, once it's voted on and the committee does their due diligence, will certainly be approved. Right. And going forward, you'll start with two challenges, and then if you're correct, you just basically have an infinite number. Yeah, you do, and then you get one in the fifth uh, uh, Yes, well. but, but no but more than no two. No more than two, right. Yeah, I... I I think that there was a touch on that particular play. I think so. I think I see the fingers go back right yep. there. Yeah. Yep, yep, right there. So before we come out, we think there's, this is gonna be there. Let's make sure the official. <laughs> yeah, he, no, he pointed oh, the wrong way. <laughs> no, he, good gracious. <laughs> He's a traffic cop in Times Square. <laughs> pointed this way, pointed that way, pointed up, pointed down. Wow, so no touch. See a touch. No. Wow, wow. Okay, so I will defer my question. All right. Texas Rice, 9 o'clock Eastern tomorrow night. Your thoughts? Well, I think, I think Rice is going to stay in it defensively, and they're going to stress Texas' block with their fast offense because of their center and how she runs the offense. I do think Texas's 
more physical and they can get to them from the service line if they're consistent, don't miss as many as tonight. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough match. I mean I think again, Texas a little more physical, they're really good at the net and have upped every level, level of their game. Texas is going to have to play better than they played tonight. I would agree with that. Nicole Lennon. I mean, this is this is a team, and then led by Carly Graham. Good team. They got some weapons on the Rice Owls, and they have beaten Texas before, although they got hammered earlier this year at home. And I think Match that's points. Good. That's going to be a difference. Texas knows what they need to do. They've been there before in that situation. They both have. So we'll see. Just making sure things are safe. Joe O'Neill has been tended to, got uh, hit facially, and has been dealing with a little bit of a bloody nostril. 24 to 19. You got to give Sacred Heart a world of credit. They hung in every time Texas blinked, yep. let down a little bit, and what a performance by Jasmine Rogers. 5-24 against Texas. Good hustle, and the ball falls. Hustling at the defensive end, beautifully done by the graduating senior, Sidney Peterson. Texas closes it out in straight sets, but it was.